what we're actually talking about is if you bend a beam, what is the stress on the outside of it? It's called the outer fibre stress. The Civil Structure Syllabus talks about bending stress calculation given the second moment of area. It's this formula here. The outer fibre stress calculation. I'll refer to it as outer fibre stress. Here it is here. What is the stress being induced as I get that beam that was flat? When I bend it, what is the stress on the outside? What is the stress on the inside? If I go that way, you can see it's clearly bent. The top's in tension, the bottom's in compression. If I had this one here, it might have been a rectangular beam. The same length as that one. When I bend it, I'm going to just put a dotted line across the middle. When I bend that, that dotted line is that dotted line. The upper surface is now shorter. So that's in compression. The underneath is now in tension. And that dotted line is still the same length as it was before. If that's shorter and that's longer, somewhere in between, it has to be no change at all, an original length. That, uh, that dotted line is what we call the neutral axis. We're neutral axis because it's not in tension, it's not in compression when the beam bends, it's still the same. Um, how do we calculate the neutral axis? Let's have a look at end on. I have got here a simple, let's start with an I beam. The neutral axis on an I beam is when the area above equals the area below. That's where the neutral axis is. It's the neutral axis, axis, area above equals area below. If I've got a TB, let's draw this to scale, I'd say the neutral axis might be about there where I'm putting in the dots. The neutral axis might be about where the dots are. Area above equals the area below. That's absolutely critical for this equation. Let's have a look at it. Stress equals M. The maximum bending moment from your calculations. You don't care about the average. All you really care about is the maximum bending moment if you're worried if it's going to fail. You just care about where is it under the most force and the most bending. Why? It's the distance from the outer fibre to the neutral axis. That's really important because here on an I beam it's the same. That distance there equals that distance there. On a T beam That is the distance y to the lower surface and the upper surface, it's just that. I'll call it y1 and y2. So y is the distance from the neutral axis to the outer fibre or the point at which you're measuring stress. We're measuring outer fibre stress. And the i is given to you it's in metres to the fourth. Let's think about that for a second. We know what a metre is. That's one metre. One metre squared. That times that. One metre squared. That's easy. One metre cubed is volume. That far out times that, times up there, that's one metre cubed. 
Now let's get your head around. Meter to the fourth. That's the change in metres cubed per metre. It's a volume change over distance is what we're looking at. Metres cubed times metres. It's a volume change. It's basically a number that depends upon the shape. It's the moment of inertia. If something's got really low inertia, it's easy to stop. High inertia, it's really hard to stop. What we talk about a lot in engineering studies is the bigger that distance is from there to there, the more the weight is from the neutral axis to the outside, the stiffer an object is, the less it bends. That's why if I get, let's say I've got two shapes here, both with the same cross section. There's a rectangular hollow section, bit of steel. I dare say that that's probably about the same cross section, give or take. That's probably about the same cross section as all of that. One, two, three, one, yeah. two, three. Yeah, about that. Might be about there, but I'm within Kui. Okay, they're about the same cross section. If I was to get a, one of those, both those bars, four metres long, and set a car on it, I know which one of those two would bend more. It would be that one, just common sense. The one that's bigger, higher distance from the neutral axis to the outer fibre, does not bend so much. Your calculations, that's all it is. This is given to you. This is given to you. Except you might have something like this. I'm going to... what can I kill? I'll just take this side out. I equals 6.7 times 10 to the 6 millimetres to the 4th. And you might have calculations Distance equals metres, 0.2 metres. Temptation is to always work in millimetres, but you need to be basically an engineer and used to working with the maths to get it accurate. If you think about this, one metre equals 1,000 millimetres, 10 to the 3. One metre squared equals one metre cubed equals one metre fourth. That really obscure measurement that's hard to get your head around equals one metre to the fourth is ten to the twelve millimetres to the fourth. If you get stuck, as you know, I've always said, work in base units, work in metres. Convert millimetres to the fourth. Distance equals 0.2 metres. 6.7 times 10 to the 6 times 10 to the minus 12 metres to the fourth equals 6.7 times 10 to the minus 6 metres to the fourth. That distance is in metres, that is in metres, now your answer is accurate. Just use that please. Don't feel tempted to use millimetres unless you're in extension 2 maths and we've spoken about it.